Yo, I'm with you, I'm going to to why Eminem diss Will Smith, the real reason. I don't know I'm an I'm this Will Smith. I don't know I'm an I'm in Will Smith had an issue. So, you know. I'll use no profanity. Then I'll probably rap like Will Smith. Will Smith said he don't use no profanity. You sure about that, Will Smith? Told me to keep it clean this time. But not everybody is as happy as Will Smith. And Will looked at Eminem and said, Did you know that if we were in the year 2000, this slap would have gone to Eminem? Or maybe the other way? That's because in the late 90s and... I don't know if Eminem would take that slap. I don't know if Eminem would sit there and and let Will Smith like smack fire out of him. I don't know. I don't know about that. Early 2000s, Eminem and Will had a funny beef. Even though more than 20 years have passed, Will's latest indirect jab is quite recent. That's why today, we're going to revisit this feud between two heavyweights. I'll also tell you the real reason behind it, as it's not what many people think. But first, and even though it might sound strange, I'm going to briefly introduce you to Will Smith's beginnings. Long before becoming the well-known actor he is today, he was a rapper, and not just a regular one. Willard Carroll Smith II was born in Philadelphia on September 25, 1968, and started rapping at an early age. One day, his grandmother Gigi found his rhyme book filled with profanity, and she wrote this on the last page. Truly intelligent people do not have to use words like this to express themselves. Please show the world that you're as smart as we think you are. Love, Gigi. From that point, I never put profanity in my rap music. These words shaped his rap career and ended up making him stand out from the rest as prof... Yo, like... Yo, like, if you, if you were a fan of Will Smith's song, comment down below, what is your, what is your favorite song with Will Smith? Let me know. What is your favorite song with Will Smith? Profanity is quite common in rap lyrics. A few years later, in 1985, he met Jeffrey, who turned out to be a DJ and producer, and they formed the group DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. In their songs, Will showcased a fresh style and great storytelling ability, leading them to sign with Jive Records just a year later. From then on, they skyrocketed like Elon's rockets. In 1987, they released their debut album, but it was in 1988 that they made history in rap, as their second album was the first double album in hip-hop's history, achieving double platinum status in just six months, and they became the first ones to win a Grammy for Best Rap Performance. However, their third album released in 1989 achieved gold status but marked a downturn for the group. They were experimenting too much with other music styles, and their fans felt like they were selling out. Also, during the recording, they were more focused on boats and hoes than on the music. It's worth noting that they were only 20 and 23 years old at that time. Yeah. I mean, the rappers do that nowadays. Talk about like hoes and all that, all that shit nowadays. Raps, hip hop been like that. You know, talk about, you know, the upbringing, you know, how much money they making, how much, how much females they get, and all that. That's just always hip hop. Always hip hop always gonna be like that. You know? With Jeff being the older one, that was when Will got into financial trouble due to tax evasion, even having to borrow money from a drug dealer. It was in 1990 when he began his acting career in a series that I hope y'all know. With that being, everybody knows that Fresh Prince of Bel Air. That was a classic show said, I think it's clear that before becoming an actor, he was a pretty successful rapper. After that, they released two more albums, snagged another Grammy, achieved further success, and wrapped things up in 93, as Will wanted to focus on his acting career and make the jump to the big screen. Already established as a Hollywood star, especially after the success of the movie Men in Black, he dropped his first solo album in 1997, which blew up and earned him two Grammys. And this is where Eminem comes into play. M was coming off a failure with his first independent album, Infinite. Released in late 96, this work barely managed to sell 70 copies. It wasn't until late 97 that he released the Slim Shady EP, a very different work that introduced Slim Shady and some incredibly harsh lyrics. 
This EP helped him climb the ranks in the underground scene, earning him invitations to participate in shows at the Lyricist Lounge. This event brought together some of the most promising unknown artists and made stops in various cities across the United States. Eminem performed in several shows of this festival between late 97 and 98, even though in March of that same year, he had already signed with Dr. Dre. In September, that festival was set to come through Philadelphia, and Eminem was one of the artists scheduled to participate in the show. Jeff, who was planning to release his debut solo album and had listened to Eminem's EP, loving what he heard, took the opportunity to invite him to his studio to collaborate on a song for the album he was planning to launch. And it was funny because one of the first records I did was Eminem because I had his very first bootleg single. The Slim and I was like, he's dope. Yeah. And I reached out to him. He came to Philly to do a show, came to the studio, made the beat. He wrote it. We recorded it. In that song, Eminem gave a shout out to Will and Jeff's group and also made a reference to the group's second album. Coincidentally, on the same day they recorded the song, Will was in town and dropped by Jeff's studio where he met Eminem and said something that stuck in Em's head. It was funny because Will actually was in town that day and came through the studio. Mm. And I played the record for Will and Will looked at Eminem and said, you're going to be the biggest flop in the world or you're going to be the biggest thing that hip hop has ever seen. The album that Jeff was preparing was going to be released. I'm, I'm, Eminem is one of the biggest um, thing that hip hop, he's still the biggest rapper that hip hop ever seen. Bro. He's one of, he's one of the folks, bro. With Sony, but Sony didn't care about any of the other artists who were going to be featured on it. Their main concern was ensuring that the song with Will Smith was included. Jeff, on the other hand, didn't want to feel forced. He wanted to make a song with Will because both of them agreed to, not because Sony pressured them. The result? The album didn't come out. But in 99, Eminem shot to fame and... I was supposed to be doing this record with Sony, and they did not care anything about Eminem. And literally a year later, when he started to blow up, Sony called and was like, we want to put this out and the first single be the Eminem record. And I was kind of like, I know exactly what you're doing. So here we are in 1999, the year Eminem rose to fame and Will Smith starred in the movie Wild Wild West. In the soundtrack album, there would be a song by Dr. Dre featuring Eminem. Everything seemed to be going well between them. In fact, they both would meet Will in person again at the MTV VMAs on 9999. Both Eminem with My Name Is and Will Smith with Miami were competing in the Best Male Video category, alongside Lenny Kravitz with Fly Away and Ricky Martin with Livin' La Vida Loca. As expected, there was a good vibe between the two. In fact, the organizers seated them together. There we had Dre, Eminem, Proof, Jada, and Will. The award went to Will, and Proof and Eminem congratulated him and shook his hand. It was then when Will gave a speech that marked a turning point in their relationship. I never killed nobody in none of my records. I will use no profanity in none of my records, and still I managed to get up there. Contrary to what many people think, Eminem wasn't bothered much by these words. I mean, like, I'm like, do you guys think that, like, it could be a rapper, like, today, like, now, today, like, today, like, if, uh, you, like, see a rapper, like, like, that, 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 like, that not use profanity, like, is a Christian, like, type rapper, like, do not use profanity, like, not so swift with a positive rapper nowadays, do y'all see that nowadays, bro, let me know. Words. He felt included in them, but it was Dr. Dre who took them badly. Essentially, Will was attacking gangster rap, a genre in which Dre was one of the foremost figures. In fact, it was Dre who started dissing Will just a few weeks later. Hip-hop songs that really irritate me right now is that, that happy bubblegum type hip-hop. You know what I'm saying? Can't get into it. For example, um, that Will Smith last record. By November, Eminem and Proof had done a freestyle for Tim Westwood during which Proof threw some lines at Will Smith. Me and Slim ain't trying to hear like Will Smith. Your career's hot over with. In January 2000, the music video for Forgot About Dre was released, in which Eminem and Dre set fire to an elderly woman's house. When Eminem's character spoke to the press, he said this. Yeah, all I know is I'm upstairs. I'm listening to my Will Smith CD. It was a way of saying that he hadn't done it because Will Smith's music was for harmless people, not for criminals. 
But in April, the final attack came. M released The Real Slim Shady as the first single from his album The Marshall Mathers LP and dedicated the famous line to Will. Will Smith don't got a cuss in his raps to sell records. Well, I do. So F him and F you too. A few days later, although he had already released the song, he gave an interview in which he said that on the album, he would attack quite a few people, including Will Smith. I've said some things about um, boy-girl groups. Um, I don't know, Will Smith. Just a day later, he gave another interview where he continued to take shots at him. What's going to happen now if people start being really nice to you and if you start getting like really rich, really, really happy and you've no, you know, mother barking dogs to talk about? Then, I, <laughs> then I'll probably rap like Will Smith. <laughs> To wrap up the interviews, two weeks later, he explained his issue with Will. If I want to diss somebody, then I'll diss him. Uh, I'll just come out and say, Will Smith. And he dissed the whole gender of rap. He did gangster rap music. I respect him for saying his opinion, but not everybody is as happy as Will Smith. So if he sees... Like he basically saying it's a different type of like hip-hop. It's happy rap, it's positivity rap, there's like, there's like, you know, gangster rap, you know... Life, uh, you know, about birds and bees and wants to rap about flowers, then let him rap about birds and bees and flowers. But don't diss nobody else. I felt like he was taking a stab at me and Dre and anybody who uses profanity on a record to express themselves. I worried about encountering face to face like uh, Will Smith, Britney Spears, Christina Aguilera, Sink. Uh... I'm actually looking forward to it. But that wasn't all. Months later, he took another shot at him in another freestyle for Tim Westwood. Every time I grab. Will Smith never said anything to Eminem about that? Oh. The mic, I ain't never soft. Not Mike Will Soft like Will Smith. These kids don't want to hear Will Smith. They want to hear real sh But it was in November at the MTV EMAs where he took it a step further. Eminem couldn't attend the ceremony because he was touring in the United States. But he left pre recorded videos in case he won in any category. And he won. In one of those messages, he appeared wearing a Will Smith mask and said the following. TV, your best album. Wow. Hey, they told me to keep it clean this time, so... uh. Will Smith stayed on his path and didn't say a word about the matter until the end of 2001 when he gave an interview to Playboy and Don't Ask Me How I Know This in which he attacked gangster rap again and talked about Eminem saying this The bottom line is that a lot of people who have been blessed with this forum aren't really yeah, smart it, it seemed like these two have a disagreement like if that, that, that could have been like you know talking like, could have been talking out like, do y'all think Eminem should have talked to Will Smith about, about, like, about, this, about, like, about, like, this, you know, like, you know, y'all know what I'm trying to say, do y'all, do y'all feel like I'm, like, should have, like, just spoken to Will Smith, you know? I have educated myself beyond a lot of my peers in the rap world, and more than anything, here's my beef. I understand what you are saying and what you feel, but the world is bigger than what you are rapping about. You mean to tell me all day long, all you do is smoke blunts, have sex and kill people? You never do anything else? You have never one time in your life really killed somebody? Never been soft and acted spun out over some girl? With this, he was throwing shade at almost all the rap of the moment, especially Dre and Snoop. However, he made it clear that he had no problem with Eminem, adding, I have less of a problem with Eminem. He is really creative, but so far over the top that it's clearly a farce. Eminem isn't trying to make people believe that's really how he lives his life every day. Eminem is silly, having a good time, and he doesn't affect my community. It took several years for him to revisit the topic. In 2005, Will released his latest album to date, featuring the song Mr. Nice Guy, where he took a shot at Eminem with these lines. Dissed by Eminem but didn't bother him. Yup, well he classy. Big Will just get another 20 mil. Walk right past E. This went unanswered, as it was during the period when Eminem was almost at the peak of his addiction. It was in 2009 when Eminem gave a free concert to present his new work, Relapse, and invited Jeff to open the show for him. 
It was there that he asked Jeff if Will had taken everything badly. When I went in there, he kind of came to me and was just like, yo, man, you know, when I said that stuff about Will, he wasn't mad. And I was like, man, Will don't care about that. And he was like, nah, man, you know, that was just me sticking up for Dre at that point in time. By the way, in October of that same year, Jeff and Eminem performed together again. And although it seemed like the story would end there, well, it didn't. Because in 2020, more than 20 years after all the drama, Will decided to throw shade again in a remix with Joyner Lucas, dropping lines that said, 60 million records sold, I was on fire. So Will do, like, fake low-key do kind of kill. I ain't even need a grill. Did it all with no cuss words. I ain't have to curse just to keep it real. And why did he do this? Well, it turns out that in 2022, he confessed during an interview that throughout his career, he hated being called soft. And finally, in July 2024, Will presented a song where he used the flow from Eminem's The Way I Am. The games of the shame of this world is insane. Trying to heal, but the battle's up here. Now that you know the whole story. Okay, that's the word. So yeah, bro, like, it's, yeah. Yo, yeah, like, Eminem, like... And he, like he said, he was defending Dr. Dre because, you know, Dr. Dre, like, f guess felt some type of way for what Will Smith said, you know. And Eminem was dissing, you know, Will Smith. And Will Smith, most of the time, wasn't responding to, um, responding to, um, and, and shit. But, you know, Will Smith, like, will say, like, will throw subs here and there, but he wasn't, he barely said shit to Eminem. So, yeah, but let me know what y'all think. Well, yeah, do, do y'all agree on, do y'all agree with Will, or do y'all agree, agree with Eminem? So let me know. Make sure you guys like, comment, subscribe, and all the vibes, which you know you are.